you're looking at the future of open top sports cars. One that's light, strong, very fast and more than able to justify its position on the planet. Welcome to BMW's revolutionary i8 Roadster. You might be familiar with the i8, the model that democratised sophisticated hybrid technology in the high performance super sports car segment. Until this revolutionary model arrived in mid-2014, plug-in petrol electric sports car motoring required the billionaire's budget needed for ownership of hypercars like the Porsche 918 Spyder, the LaFerrari and the mighty McLaren P1. At a stroke, this BMW changed all of that, delivering an equally sophisticated taste of the future, but doing so for realistic Porsche 911 money. Originally, BMW designed the i8 as a coupe, but they showed a Spider concept version at the Beijing Motor Show in 2012 to see if there would be enough customer interest in an open top version. There was, and when the design team removed the roof of the fixed top model and found that the carbon fiber chassis was easily stiff enough to support a convertible format, the Munich maker gave the green light for production, following which the i8 Roadster was launched in the spring of 2018. It arrived on the market at the same time as the i8 Coupe was receiving a significant update, most notably to its rather unique powertrain. And that's based around the use of two gearboxes, three electric motors, and a sophisticated three-cylinder turbo petrol engine. Uh, this boosted by a 200 kilo bank of high-tech lithium-ion batteries and transmitting torque to the tarmac via a four-wheel drive system. As part of the mid-term improvements, BMW has added 12 horsepower to the engine output while upgrading the cell capacity of those lithium ion batteries to 34 amp hours and increasing its energy capacity to 11.6 kilowatt hours. In the process, raising this car's potential pure electric driving range by 10 miles to 33 miles. It's all enough to distance this i8 further from its conventional super sports car rivals. And in this roadster form, you get an extra element of exotic desirability. But would you really pay a six figure sum for a three cylinder, 1.5 litre plug-in hybrid convertible? Well, we think you might. If you're in the market, you have half a care for the environment and you can take the time to view the film that's coming up. Here's something quite new, a super sports car that promises you the thrill of high performance open top motoring, but with near silent aural accompaniment from its electrically assisted powertrain. So what's it like? Well, it's hard to know exactly what to expect when you raise the dihedral driver's door, ease across the wide sill of the carbon fiber passenger cell and settle yourself into the low slung cockpit. Already you know the experience is going to be rather different, a perception confirmed by the silence that follows a press on this start button. Instead of the V8 or flat six roar you'd expect from a super sports car of this kind, you're merely treated to a series of sci-fi style bleeps and a distant whir from the electric motor up front. Star Trek style graphics spring into life on the virtual instrument screen ahead of you and strange enviro conscious jargon references e-boost, e-drive and charge functionality. For all of us who love our cars, this apparently is the future. You can't help but wonder what's in store. Now, if you're sensing a degree of reticence here, then we'll be frank and admit that for us, there is something suspiciously ecocentric about the whole concept of a hybrid plug-in petroelectric sports car like this. It's the kind of technology that's surely very welcome in a green-minded family hatch like this model's futuristic stablemate, BMW's i3. But in a top performance GT, its use smacks of political correctness. Driving enthusiasts tend to reckon that they know what very fast, very rewarding top sports cars should be like, and they don't really want anyone messing with the concept. Thank you very much.
except that the industry already has. Uh, the days of those conventional V10s, V8s and flat sixes have long been numbered and hypercars like the McLaren P1, the LaFerrari and the Porsche 918 Spyder have paved the way for hybrid power in every corner of the sports car segment. Uh, the game's moving on. It's just that the higher volume class contenders haven't yet caught up or at least some of them haven't. I mean, in 2014, BMW showed them the kind of car that they should be developing when it brought us the original version of this model. Initially, it was offered only in coupe form though. It was quite a package using a tiny mini sourced 1.5 litre three cylinder petrol power plant uh, sighted in a mid engine format behind the back seats and driving the rear wheels using a six speed auto gearbox. Up front, the i8 design provided for an electric motor to work in concert with old fashioned fossil fuel, drawing charge from a high voltage lithium ion battery that simultaneously powered the front wheels through its own dedicated two speed auto transmission. Uh, there was no need to fundamentally change this setup when the time came for the midterm revisions to this design in 2018, but it did make sense to reflect the improvements in electrical technology that been introduced since this model's original launch, hence the installation of a more densely packed version of that lithium-ion battery, which offers greater capacity, raised from 20 to 34 amp hours, and uses fourth generation cells that increase energy output from 7.1 to 11.6 kilowatt hours. And that all makes quite a difference. The all-electric driving range is up by almost 50% and there's a 12 horsepower increase for the electric motor which now puts out 143 HP. Add to that the output of the 231 HP petrol engine and you have 374 braked horses to play with. Now true, that is around 100 horsepower less than obvious class rivals, but perceptually it doesn't feel like that because the electrical part of this power plant delivers all of its torque instantly. So throttle responses feel razor sharp. Uh, the fact that this car somehow manages to be lighter than most of its rivals also helps. And that's an advantage that's particularly apparent with this roadster body style. Thanks to its advanced carbon fiber reinforced F1 style passenger cell, this very it doesn't need the lardy structural strengthening that uh, really does afflict more conventional sports convertibles. As a result, it's just 60 kilos heavier than its coupe counterpart which is great because in roadster form you can enjoy what this car does so much more. In the fixed top version you quickly adjust to the way the uh, well the near silent way that this car goes about its business in its various e-drive settings. With the fabric top retracted though which can be done in just 15 seconds at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour uh, the whisper quiet power plant constantly makes its presence felt amplifying the sights, the sounds and the smells of the world around you. Speed up a bit and as usual with EVs you sense tyre roar more than you normally would but buffeting is kept to a minimum and it's easily possible to have a conversation with your passenger at motorway speeds. For the kind of full electric progress that I've just described, you'll need to have clicked on the e-drive button just below this starter and have kept the car in one of its two standard driving modes, Comfort or Eco Pro, uh, in which case the car will be limited to front wheel drive. And that's a rather odd sensation in a high performance BMW sports car and it'll be a battery powered top speed of 75 miles an hour. But of course, if you approach that kind of velocity for any length of time, you're gonna decimate your available or electric driving range uh, which for this roadster model is now WLTP rated at 32 miles. In this test we've frequently found a 20 mile range to be a more achievable reality but with careful driving and with better use of the very effective uh, regenerative braking system you could probably get closer to BMW's claim. But why would you want to? I mean, this is a super sports car after all, which means as soon as possible, you're gonna to want to snick the auto gear lever to its left-hand sports setting and see what the i8 can do. As the dashboard graphics flash orange and the right-hand power meter becomes a rev counter, the engine fires up, if it hasn't done already, uh, and chimes in with power to the rear wheels that supplants the uh, torque already developed uh, by the electric motor at the front. 
The result is four-wheel drive traction and some serious pep. 62 miles an hour from rest, that's achievable in just uh, 4.6 seconds on the way to a maximum speed that uh, has to be reined in at 155 miles an hour. At the same time, that sports setting firms up the damping, weights up the steering and carefully tweaks the torque split for maximum entertainment. There's even an artificial roar that's piped in through the speakers and actually it sounds rather good. The real test though comes on twistier tarmac. Uh, there's a reason why hybrids don't tend to appeal to enthusiastic drivers. Uh, this one might though. The ideal near 50-50 weight distribution and the super low centre of gravity virtually eliminate body roll when the variable damper control system firms things up. And with all-wheel drive traction pinning you to the road, it's really very difficult to unstick this thing, even if you're brave enough to disable the traction control system. Uh, the ride isn't quite so brilliant. It communicates low-speed tarmac bumps and ripples more than most obvious rivals would, although things do improve quite a lot when you're travelling at pace on smooth highways. Also less than perfect is the steering. I mean, it has been improved with a little extra feel and heft as part of the midterm update, but anyone coming to this i8 from a Porsche, a Jaguar, or a Mercedes rival is gonna miss the feeling of connection to the road surface that those compelling models deliver. Uh, to be frank, uh, this isn't really any kind of track day car. Its feedback's really more along the lines of the sort of thing you get from a Grand Touring GT. Put another way, it's more BMW 8 series than Porsche 911. Which isn't to say that this car can't entertain once you adjust to its rather unique character. It absolutely can. Uh, no, you can't hurl it into a corner with quite the abandon that's possible in a 911 or an R8. But if you lower your entry speed a fraction and then fire the throttle early on through the bend, there's that satisfying feeling of instant electric motor thrust, which combined with all that traction makes this BMW an exceptionally quick point-to-point B-road blaster. Together, the two power sources develop a combined torque output of 570 newton meters, which is more than enough to go Porsche or Maserati chasing. And when you're done, you simply flip the gear lever back to the right to access the car's alternate, more enviro-conscious mode of motoring, uh, which makes so much more sense than the rumbly, pointlessly polluting demeanor delivered by obvious rivals when you're commuting. Or simply recovering from the kind of stressful day that enabled you to afford a car like this in the first place. Now the car always defaults into its most laid-back comfort setting, but a click on the drive performance control rocker switch you'll find on top of the high centre console that houses all those battery cells also gives you the option of that more economically minded Eco Pro mode. With either selection made, the i8 has a rather pleasing habit of continually trying to revert to all-electric propulsion as often as it can, providing your speed's reasonable and the battery has sufficient charge. This is, in short, a different kind of sports car. It may be a vision of the future from the past, but it's a future an enthusiast could live with, especially in this roadster form. Thank goodness for that. Even standing still, there's a sense of theatre about this i8, with a riot of complex surface treatments, contrasting colours, sharp creases and scalloped sills. This is perhaps the most distinctive feature though. Dihedral doors are rare enough in automotive design, but these ones are particularly unique. They're fashioned from aluminium, carbon fibre and thermoplastic to make them light and easy to use. Now they've been re-engineered as part of the changes made to create this roadster design so as to integrate frameless windows and to better fit with the new roof arrangement. Oh yes, the roof, that took a bit of thought. Now customers didn't want to lift out target top, BMW didn't want the weight and complexity of metal folding panels, so we have a soft top but quite a clever one with a composite panel integrated between the layers of fabric at the front to stop the roof material ballooning up at speed. Now it can be activated either from inside the car or remotely via this classy display key. And either way, the electric motors complete their visual origami 
virtually silently in 15 seconds and it can work at speeds of up to 31 miles an hour. The hood folds in a Z shape and it stows vertically in the space where tiny back seats would be in the coupe model. Its sandwiched fabric nestles between the rear bulkhead and the mid rear mounted combustion engine. The engine is not on prominent illuminated display as it would be in an R8 or an NSX, which is probably just as well, given that BMW has borrowed it from a humble Mini 1. Uh, the engineering here, though, is no less impressive, and it's based around what BMW calls its life drive architecture. Now, to understand that, uh, you'll need to fully appreciate the issues that this Munich maker had to overcome in creating the i8. Uh, think of what this car has to package up. To gearboxes, three electric motors, uh, that three-cylinder turbo petrol engine, a 200 kilo bank of high-tech lithium-ion batteries, and all the associated technology of four-wheel drive. Now, you don't need to be an engineer to understand what all that adds up to. Surplus weight, and that's the one thing that you don't want in an involving sports car. So, this i8 doesn't have it. Not in the coupe form we tested back in 2014, and on this Roadster guys either, which adds just 60 kilos to the fixed top model's uh, 1535 kilo curb weight figure. That's right on the button against ordinary conventional super sports car rivals, directly matching a comparable Porsche 911 Cabriolet, and making this car actually considerably lighter than competitors, like the Mercedes AMG GT Roadster and Audi's R8 Spyder, it's an astonishing feat that the life drive intelligent lightweight design approach makes possible. Uh, the name designates the two separate platform segments that combine to create the underpinnings for this car. Now first up is the aluminium drive module that shrouds the combustion engine and electric motor, the battery pack and the various power electronics and chassis components. Now this connects to the separate life module and that's the name that BMW gives to this i8 CFR RP carbon fiber reinforced plastic passenger cell. CFRP is massively stiff and rigid, yet it weighs 50% less than steel. Without it, this car's concept simply wouldn't work, not in coupe form and particularly not in this roadster guise. Because of that high strength CFRP passenger shell, uh, the designers of this open top variant didn't need to build in additional structural reinforcement to make up for the removal of the roof. Uh, there are some additional panels in the uh, rear suspension and the strengthened windscreen frame that's fashioned out of reinforced CFRP, but that's about it or at least that's about it for this Roadster model's structural changes. Uh, there are plenty of further aerodynamic and stylistic ones. Um, at the prototype stage, BMW's engineers found that warm air from the front-mounted radiators uh, was flowing into the cabin when the roof was down, so the nose vents were closed, and that warm air was redirected through the wheel arches and on under the car. That fix also made necessary the need for a new splitter under the front bumper. Uh, this rear window is another integral aerodynamic part, doubling as a wind deflector, and it lowers itself by 30 millimeters when the roof's opened to reduce air turbulence in the cabin. Uh, so that you can adjust that for yourself, this glass panel can also be opened or closed independently of the roof. Uh, curving around it is perhaps the most arresting stylistic feature of this car, this intricately fashioned floating panel that flows up behind each seat and then eases dramatically back to sculpt itself over over those sophisticated LED tail lights. It seems appropriate that such unique engineering should be so uniquely fashioned. Clearly futuristic, this i8 is every inch of BMW and every inch of sports car with its long wheelbase, short overhangs and solid stance. Powerfully pretty, the exaggerated wedge shape, uh, the long drawn out lines and the flat silhouette combined to deliver the required degree of visual drama, emphasized in the case of this open top variant by bespoke C pillars emblazoned with roadster badging. Lower down, the carbon fiber plastic panels flow with complex curvatures and as with the coupe, you get this lower black sill panel that's tinged with a frozen gray metallic accent. It separates huge wheel arches housing exclusive 20 inch light alloy wheels, the weight of which have been reduced by a kilogram as part of the changes made to this revised model range. 
Uh, the nose section is low and wide with large air intakes arranged over several levels and slim LED headlights. The canners here uh, feature BMW's laser light technology, which doubles the ordinary high beam range. Uh, they flank the brand's familiar kidney grille, blanked off of course here because it serves no practical purpose since there's no engine beneath this sweeping bonnet. OK, let's take a look inside and that requires a considered approach due to the angled way that these butterfly doors open. Now they hinge dramatically from the windscreen frame. You might struggle to use them in a tightly packed space and we'd worry about use in a low roofed multi-storey car park too. Climbing into this IAT Roadster is easier than it would be in the coupe model, but not much. Even with the roof down like this, it's virtually impossible to enter in a dignified manner. Uh, with low seats and wide carbon fibre sills, you pretty much have to fall into the driver's seat, and it takes a hefty tug to pull the door down too. In the cabin, you'll find the styling as futuristic as it was outside. The curved layered dash made up of overlapping three-dimensional segments and complemented by contrasting colors. Uh, cocooned yet surprisingly roomy, the driver-focused cockpit envelops you with slender blue stitched leather sports seats. They have been redesigned as part of a package of midterm updates, which also include the standard inclusion of these carbon fiber trimming panels and the addition of touchscreen functionality for the 8.8 inch iDrive infotainment monitor that's positioned at the top of the dash there. Most arresting though is the display that you view through this grippy three-spoke wheel, a sci-fi style screen which is also 8.8 inches in size and that delivers range readings for fuel and battery power below two circular digital dials that change in colour depending on the driving mode that you select. Now in the comfort setting that this car always defaults to from rest, the left hand gauge uh, covers your speed while that on the right is designated as a power meter and it shows you what the electric motor is doing while at the same time uh, it grades the effect of any regenerative braking. Uh, select the Eco Pro mode and the colours switch from grey to blue as an efficiency display is added. Um, the most radical change though comes when you flick this shard-like auto gear stick to the left into the full-on sports setting. Then orange dials spring into your view and a rev counter replaces the power meter on the right hand side of the screen. Not that you'll have to be looking at that much because many of the readouts that really matter are duplicated onto a head-up display that's projected uh, into your line of sight at the base of the windscreen. Survey the smooth sweep of the dashboard and the excellent ergonomics clearly bear Munich's mark. Uh, now true, it's not quite as adventurous an approach as was used in the brand's humbler i3 hatch. And a bit disappointingly, uh, much of the switch gear is recognizable from cheaper models, but the overall ambiance is difficult to fault. Recycled textiles and soft, supple leather blend together with a standard ambient lighting system, which if required, can alternate between between uh, blue, amber and white. At night, the effect is stunning. Uh, we mentioned the improved center dash iDrive screen. Fortunately, that still retains a lower rotary controller onto which commands can now be traced with your fingertip. Uh, as you'd expect, uh, the monitor deals with all the things that don't directly concern the performance experience. Uh, this center dash screen gives you connected drive, media, radio, nav, communication, and my vehicle options that connect you into features like the standard Harman Kardon DAB audio system system and 4G LTE connectivity as well as Wi-Fi hotspot preparation and a 20 gigabyte hard drive. All of this is standard fare as is Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring although not Android Auto. Also included are the many connected drive services that feature in more conventional BMW models. A concierge service, for example, which connects you through to an operator to help with journeying information, and a wide range of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts. Plus, the system can remotely update its own software too. 
Bear in mind though that uh, some of the digital services on offer come included only for three years and some uh, like online connected music and Microsoft Office 365 which syncs in your emails and your calendar for just three months. After that you have to pay. Now to some extent this does feel a bit like a case of the Munich Maker giving with one hand and taking away with the other. What else? Uh, well, it's straightforward to find a comfortable driving position thanks to powered seats and a steering column that adjusts widely for reach and rake. Even six footers will be able to stretch out a bit and won't struggle for headroom even when the top's up. Uh, all round visibility, it's not bad for such a low slung sports car, but to make sure BMW has provided all round parking sensors and a standard surround view camera system for low speed manoeuvring. On to interior practicalities and as is the sports car norm, cabin storage space is somewhat limited uh, and that's not helped by the fact that uh, there are no door pockets here. Obviously the deletion of the coupe model's rear seats doesn't help either, although to compensate BMW has provided 100 litres of storage space uh, between the roof box and the seat backs which is compartmentalised into three parts and that's ideal for stuffing coats and soft bags into. Otherwise, it's as it would be in the coupe version. Uh, there's a decently sized glove box and a shallow lidded compartment here in the center console that gets a 12 volt socket and which can be equipped with a wireless charging mat for your handset. Uh, there's a smaller lidded cubby just behind the gear lever, which has a USB port. And there's a little coin tray in front of the gear stick here. Uh, there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses though, but you do get a couple of cup holders, um, a ticket clip here on the drive driver's sun visor and a netted storage area in the passenger footwell. There's also a branded pocket just there on the bulkhead. So let's finish with a look at boot space. Now it's just as well that that extra space behind the seats was freed up because there isn't much room available in the boot, uh, just 88 litres. That's around half the trunk space offered to buyers of the coupe version. In addition, most of the space you do get is taken up with the two charging leads and with this repositionable panel. Still, if you combine what's on offer here with what you get in the cabin, it's a bit more than you get with a rival Porsche 911 Cabriolet or Audi R8 Spider models. Either way though, you're going to have to travel light, which uh, given this car's carbon fibre structure is perhaps appropriate. BMW expects this open-topped i8 model to outsell its fixed-top stablemate at a rate of 3 to 1, despite the fact that this car comes at quite a premium in its roadster guise. At the time of this test in spring 2019, the £127,000 asking price represented a £12,000 premium over the coupe model. It now seems a long time since the 2014 i8 launch when, with the aid of a government grant that's no longer offered, uh, the coupe version of this model could be yours for nearly dead on £100,000. Now, both body styles come in a single plug-in petrol-electric hybrid specification and have one auto-only six-speed paddle shift gearbox. Now, before we start struggling to find direct rivals for this car, let's position it for you in BMW's current convertible model lineup. Uh, the other luxury cabrio the brand makes is the 8 Series convertible. Uh, one of those in M850i xDrive form will cost you around £20,000 less than an i8 Roadster. But of course, that's a very different kind of car. It's got two more seats for a start. Plus, of course, there's a big V8 petrol unit beneath the bonnet that will cost vastly more to run. The latter comment is one also applicable to most market segment competitors, almost all of whom offer much more power but considerably more expensive running costs from their huge V8 or V10 petrol engines. Uh, the only other model in the super sports car segment that uses hybrid technology in any form is Honda's NSX, which features a 3-litre V6 twin turbo boosted by an electric motor. But that car can't be had in open-topped form and it costs £150,000. Plus, it isn't a plug-in, it offers 200 horsepower more, it struggles to reach 30 mpg on the combined cycle and it chugs out a smoky 228 grams per kilometer of CO2. In other words, it's a completely different kind of product. 
Otherwise, there are no really direct alternatives to this i8 Roadster if you want an open-top super sports car with an eco-minded remit for less than £150,000. Uh, for reference, your general options when it comes to a sports cabrio of this sort, costing just over six figures, start with models like the Lexus LC convertible, the Porsche 911 Carrera GTS Cabriolet and the Maserati Grand Cabrio Sport, all three of which could be yours for well under £110,000. If you can stretch further to just under 120,000, then you could consider either a Jaguar F-Type SVR convertible, a Mercedes AMG GT Roadster, or a Mercedes AMG SL63. From there, the options become much pricier. An Audi R8 V10 Spider will probably cost you the best part of 140,000, and you'll typically be paying in the 150,000 to the 160,000 pound bracket for cars like the Bentley Continental GT convertible, the Aston Martin DB11 Volante, or the McLaren 570S Spider. To be frank though, we can't see anyone who'd really appreciate and seriously want to buy an i8 Roadster spending too long credibly considering any of those options. Such a person would probably disparage conventional engine technology and question the way that running costs will enormously increase for buyers choosing anything other than an i8 in this segment. Now, assuming you're of that mind, then you'll want to know just how much BMW offers to buyers of this car as part of the standard spec. And as you'd expect, for the asking price, there's quite a lot included. Outside, we'll start with these piercing adaptive LED headlights and these gorgeous 20-inch W-spoke style 470 series light alloy wheels. Uh, the retractable soft top and the innovative dihedral doors will doubtless be car park talking points too. While those who look a bit closer will note the high gloss black blue accented brake calipers, uh, metallic paint is standard and the main i8 exterior color choices, pearl effect crystal white, e-copper, Donington gray, or as in this case, Sophisto gray, all come with contrasting color panels in areas like the bonnet. And and frozen grey metallic accent surfaces on the side skirts, at the rear and on the front kidney grille surround. Uh, other features of the standard kit list include all-round parking sensors, uh, a surround view camera, comfort access keyless entry and auto headlamps and wipers. Uh, as for driver stuff, well, uh, BMW's drive performance control and variable damper control systems uh, both allow you to set the car up uh, for the road you're on and the mood you're in. Uh, well, you should also mention that the standard specification of this i8 now includes the achingly cool BMW display key with its built-in color screen. Now, amongst other things, uh, this clever key allows remote control of the ventilation system. So for example, you can warm your car up or cool it down while you're having breakfast. And on the key screen, you'll be able to check whether you've closed the doors, um, when a service is due, and just how much fuel you've got left. Inside, there's leather, not only for the grippy, heated electric sports seats, but also for the dash binnacle, as part of what BMW calls its Carpo Interior World Package. Uh, plus, you get the brand's carbon fibre interior trim package, which uses that finishing for the dashboard inlay, the centre console, and the door handles. Uh, a lovely, grippy, sport multifunction leather steering wheel with gear shift paddles is provided for you to hold. And there's a head-up display. Plus, you get a digital cockpit instrument binnacle screen. Um, other features making the team sheet include an ambient interior lighting package, uh, two zone climate control, cruise control, power folding mirrors, an auto dimming a rear view mirror, heated washer jets and a Thatcham category one alarm. Plus BMW now also includes the larger fuel tank that used to be optional. As usual on BMWs, there's an iDrive infotainment setup. This one incorporates the brand's professional multimedia navigation system, and that's a setup that's able to electronically communicate with the powertrain to ensure that your i8's battery power is used as effectively as possible throughout any given trip. Uh, via the 8.8 .8 inch 
touch control center dash display. You can also access a BMW professional radio with a DAB tuner and a Harman Kardon loudspeaker system. Uh, there's voice control connectivity, as you'd expect, along with a 20 gigabyte hard disk drive memory for your media stuff and Wi-Fi hotspot preparation too. And there's Bluetooth phone pairing included, which reminds us that BMW has at last included Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring on one of its models, although annoyingly that is only free for the first year. Access to Android Auto though is still missing. There's a full range of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features, including the full suite of BMW connected drive services. Uh, things like teleservices, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it, and real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route. Uh, plus, there's a company's suite of BMW vehicle apps, which give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts for up to four days ahead, and information on highway tolls. In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and mapping upgrades. And of course, it'll read out text messages to you. Um, i8 buyers now get as standard a concierge service that at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator uh, and that operator will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive it. Um, if you've owned a BMW before, you might be familiar with the standard remote services pack Package, uh, which allows you to control many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. And you'll also want to download the clever BMW Connected Plus app, which auto-learns your frequent journeys and which will list them when you're most likely to drive them. As for extra cost features, well, of course, there are plenty of those. If you can afford just over 5,000 pounds more, then you've really got to consider the BMW laser light headlamps that we've been trying here, which deliver an even brighter and more penetrating brilliant white shine. And that's one able to illuminate your way up to 600 meters down the road. That's nearly double the range of the standard LED beams. Uh, you can also have what BMW calls E-Drive exterior sound and acoustic pedestrian warning system which emits an artificial e-drive sound at speeds below 20 miles an hour to warn pavement folk of this i8's near silent arrival. And beyond that, well, you'd be silly not to pay extra for the BMW Trackstar vehicle tracking system that'll locate and recover your i8 should it ever be stolen. And there's an optional aerodynamic package comprising of a rear bootlit spoiler and a two-piece front splitter. And if you don't like the standard W-spoke 20-inch uh, alloy wheels, there are four alternative designs. We've got the bicolor radial spoke rims here, and they can alternatively be ordered in jet black, while there are a couple of turbine wheel styles too. Many i8 customers budget two to three thousand pounds more to get one of the upgraded interior packages. There are two of those. Uh, the Halo theme sees exclusive Dalbergia brown tanned leather matched with careful blue stitched contrasting and Amido black metallic accents. Or if you like a lighter ambiance, there's the Acaro package, which finishes the natural leather of the cabin in a brighter e copper coloured shade with contrasting finishing. Uh, whatever your choice, your dealer may prevail upon you to spend a little more to get the seat belts finished in BMW i Blue. What you won't have to pay extra for is this car's iPure Impulse card, which allows owners to access the Munich Maker's BMW iPure Impulse Experience program. Now this, rather vaguely, promises access to a world of inspiration and privilege, with cardholders being regularly presented with new ideas for contemporary living and opportunities to attend unique events. Safety-wise, the fundamentals of i8 design offer plenty of peace of mind. Uh, the CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced plastic, used in this car's so-called life module passenger compartment, is extremely strong and is able to survive extremely high impact speeds with hardly any deformation, as it can in the cockpit of a Formula One car. Uh, this i8 builds on that by including, as standard, the camera-driven features included within BMW's driving assistant package. Now, as part of this, there are forward collision warning, 
like uh, city collision mitigation and preventative pedestrian protection features, which all deliver different elements of autonomous braking at speeds of up to 35 miles an hour. Uh, the center dash screen can also show surround view, top and side view images that facilitate parking. Uh, the high beam assistant is able to dip your lights at night in the face of oncoming traffic. And the speed limit info feature pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays them on the dash. More familiar features include the expected twin front side and curtain airbags and an Isofix charge seat fastening, plus a dynamic stability control system that oversees DTC dynamic traction control. Then there's an ABS braking system with brake drying, brake fade compensation and brake pre-tensioning features, plus CBC cornering brake control and DBC dynamic brake control. Uh, you also get dynamic LED brake lights that flash in emergency stops a hill start assistant that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, uh, tyre pressure monitoring and cruise control with a braking function that'll cut in if you suddenly come across a tailback on the motorway. Now, just in case all of that should fail to keep you from having an accident, uh, a BMW emergency call with teleservices system is standard, which works with an integrated SIM card, and in an accident, that can automatically alert the emergency services. Now, this system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but it also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how, how many airbags burst, and so on. So if you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and more ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. And that's a potentially life-saving difference. The setups have been further improved to also automatically activate uh, after low speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment, immediately after the impact, flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. Ultra lightweight materials, specific aerodynamic optimization, and a comprehensive package of BMW efficient dynamics technologies combine with this car's innovative life drive vehicle architecture to promise a lot when it comes to running cost returns, particularly from the i8 in this much improved form. Uh, most of the really important changes that BMW's made to the fundamental design of this model since its original introduction relate to the installation of a much more sophisticated lithium-ion battery with cell capacity raised from 20 to 34 amp hours. The use of fourth generation cells have increased this unit's energy capacity, previously rated at 7.1 kilowatt hours, to a much more usable 11.6 kilowatt hours, uh, hence the 12 horsepower increase in output from the front mounted electric motor and more importantly a 10 mile increase in this roadster variant's quoted all electric range which now stands at 31 miles. And that's just a mile less less than the coupe version. It's all enough, of course, to put this i8 on a completely different level to its conventional rivals when it comes to fuel and CO2 returns. After all, if you had a 10 mile journey to and from work every day and use this car only in full electric mode for your commute, uh, it's quite conceivable that you'd hardly ever have to put any fuel in it. Or at least you wouldn't, providing you kept out of the sport mode, which keeps the engine running all the time. Instead, for eco-friendly use, you have to keep keep the uh, drive performance control system in either its comfort or in its eco pro setting. Uh, now in both cases that'll see the car always looking to try to run on electric power alone which it can do at speeds of up to 65 miles an hour. Uh, we'd be more likely to select the separate e-drive mode which gives you the same pure electric range but it raises the maximum speed to 75 miles an hour. In reality, of course, you're going to need some petrol power at some point as part of a total combined fuel and battery range that frankly remains a bit restricted. It helps that BMW has now standardized a larger 42 litre fuel tank, but even with that brim full and the Eco Pro mode selected, it struggled to get much more than 400 miles in total uh, for an operating range. A 250 mile total is probably much more realistic. Uh, talking of realistic predictions, the quoted 120 
4 mpg combined cycle fuel economy figure is clearly nonsense even though that's supposedly been calculated using the latest wltp world harmonized light vehicle test procedure cycle it is though realistically possible to consistently return around 45 mpg in this car which to give you some perspective is about double what you get from a conventionally engined rival BMW quotes a figure of 56 mpg for a typical commute through city traffic and along country roads, but we've never been able to replicate that. Another pie in the sky stat is found in the quoted 42 grams per kilometre CO2 figure. Now BMW wants to emphasise how much better this is than what you get from a smoky V8 or V10 that uh, class rivals tend to use, which tend to put out readings in the 220 to 250 grams per kilometre bracket. So rather annoyingly, the company has had this car's emissions rated under WLTP rules, but converted back to the old, notoriously inaccurate new European driving cycle spec. Still, the most important thing is that the government believes this stat. Hence, this car's astonishingly low 13% benefiting kind taxation status and VED band B grouping. And that means zero road tax. For those fortunate enough to be buying a super sports car as company transport who don't want to keep the treasury in gold-plated dispatch boxes, it makes a choice of an I-8 in this segment something of a no-brainer. Now, when we originally tested this car, we calculated that a 40% taxpayer running an i8 as a company car would save around a thousand pounds a month over the cost of running a comparable Porsche 911 and not much has changed. Of course, you'll also have to take into account the cost of the electricity you'll be using to power that uprated battery. Your electricity costs will obviously vary depending on your supplier and when and where you choose to charge. But as a rough guide by our calculations, 100 miles of full EV motoring in this car would probably set you back around £8 in electricity charges. And talking of charges, two leads are provided for the purpose of replenishing the high voltage battery. There's a mode 2 cable that you can use to plug into a standard domestic socket and there's a mode 3 cable for the kind of higher power output that you'd hopefully get from a public charging point. Now if you're new to any kind of EV motoring you're going to need to budget for the installation of a BMW i Warbox in your garage for overnight plugging in. In its latest form the Warbox allows for this high voltage battery to be recharged at a rate of 3.6 kilowatts. Uh, that means that charging can be completed in under three hours. It'd be about four and a half hours from an ordinary plug or around about three hours to get an 80 percent charge. Talking of charging when you're parked up at home you can even buy a solar charge garage should you happen to live somewhere particularly sunny and that kind of renewable electricity incidentally was used to manufacture this car in the first place anyway you can control the charging process either from a planned charging climate control section of the center dash iDrive screen which includes the option to time your charging to suit a pre-entered tariff time slot or you can do the whole thing on your smartphone via the BMW Connected Plus app. Uh, either way this BMW can tell you how much charge is left in the battery and when the car's uh, plugged into the mains you can remotely precondition the climate control system to either heat up or to cool down the cabin either from the app uh, from the display key or from inside the car that way it won't be necessary to waste charge doing that once you get on the move uh, for owners really buying into the EV concept the Munich maker also offers a full roster of what it calls 360 degree electric support services and that includes public charge point subscriptions and reserved parking at charging stations and on that subject in Incidentally, your dealer will encourage you to register for a Charge Now card and that will give you access to more than 5,500 UK public charging points. Get used to plugging in when you're out and about and you may find that you can make the charging process work for you to accommodate lengthier pure electric journeys. The car's professional navigation system helps here, analysing every route submitted and communicating with the powertrain to ensure that the electric motor is used throughout the trip as effectively as possible. That might mean, for example, ensuring that the battery has sufficient capacity for urban driving towards your journey's end. Now you can set that feature up manually by selecting a hold state of charge option from the auto e-drive section of the Centre Dash iDrive screen. 
In fact, there are an awful lot of things you can do to maximize efficiency and range in this car. Most obviously, it'll help if you keep the right-hand power meter on the instrument binnacle in its blue charge and e-drive sections as you drive in comfort or eco pro modes. Uh, there is also a technology in action section in the center of the high drive screen that gives you eco pro tips and alongside a fuel efficiency graph shows you how much of your journey has been completed under engine power and how much was under e-power or you can select an interactive graphic that shows you at any given time what's being powered or charged by what. In addition, there's an onboard computer page that gives you your current e-consumption in uh, miles per kilowatt hour, uh, petrol consumption too in MPG and average speed. It's, it's all very clever. You might come down to earth with a bit of a bump though when it comes to selling this car at the end of your period of ownership. Uh, after three years and 36,000 miles, industry experts predict that this BMW will be worth just 39% of its original value. Uh, to give you some perspective on that, a rival Porsche 911 Cabriolet will be worth 54%. Still, that figure may end up varying as the plug-in hybrid sports car market matures. Um, working in this model's favor is that many owners of supercar just don't care. They want the latest and greatest and for many this i8 is going to represent just that. What else? Well insurance is inevitably a top of the shop group 50 as with every car in this segment. Uh, that only leaves reliability which might be a concern with so much new technology on board. Uh, now that's covered by an 8 year 62,000 mile warranty for the battery pack and an unremarkable 3 year warranty for the rest of the car. Um, you are unlikely though to need either package. After all the basic layout of the 3 cylinder engine used here has been well proven not only in the Mini but in also in BMW's own 2 Series Active Tourer model. You'll need to fettle your i8 with an intermediate service every two years or at just over 18,000 miles, whichever comes first. Uh, there is a service requirements iDrive screen that shows the state of things like the oil and brake fluid levels and tells you if your car needs a regular check. Uh, regular maintenance costs can be kept down if, as we would recommend, you opt for BMW's servicing pack at point of purchase. Uh, with this, one payment of around £1,000 covers all routine servicing for five years and finally should you prang those futuristic panels you'll find that they'll pop back into place after low speed impacts and repair work after a harder hit should be no more expensive than it would be for a conventional rival despite that high-tech construction Like its coupe counterpart, this i8 Roadster offers a fundamentally different interpretation of what a super sports car can be. At the wheel of one of these, high performance motoring is no longer an ecological embarrassment, but an expression of futuristic fascination. In an i8, more than any other car of its kind, driving enjoyment and planet-friendly performance at last meet in unison. It's a very special blend, and in roadster form, it's a beautiful piece of pavement theater. But that's not to say it's a perfect sports car. A Mercedes-AMG GT would ride better, a uh, Porsche 911 would turn through the bends more sharply, and both will flow across tarmac with greater smoothness and control than this BMW with its rather firm ride and its slightly anaesthetized steering. With all that said though, this i8 gets closer to those class benchmark models than we ever thought it would closer than a car ever should that's more than twice as frugal and so much cleaner in emissions that it costs a fraction of the usual rate to tax. Plus, it actually improves on what its rivals can offer in terms of highway refinement. View an i8 as a GT rather than an out and out sports car and this BMW really comes into its own, provided you don't mind the tiny boot that is. Nor is there any reason why in years to come it can't be even better. It's lightness, it's almost perfect near 50-50 weight distribution, and it's impressively low center of gravity could certainly all be tuned to give us more of a B-road brawler, and possibly will be. For the time being though, BMW has created what its customers wanted, and they've shown the rest of the industry just how far behind it is in delivering the future of the sports car. Hybrid power may ultimately be the wrong direction for all our automotive futures, but like it or not, we're going there. So let's have some fun on the way. 
The i8 brings us that, particularly in this Roadster form, and it delivers much more besides. Nothing else we can think of in this segment is so striking, surprising and sensational, yet so ultimately sensible in what it sets out to offer. It's a landmark car, nothing more, nothing less, and an incredible achievement.